In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Today we celebrate the baptism of the Lord. And this brings the Christmas season to an end. So tomorrow begins the ordinary time of the year. We pray for the grace to know Jesus more intimately, to love him more intensely, and to follow him more closely. And so let us now acknowledge our sins and prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to, to Almighty God, God to you, my brothers and sisters, and sisters that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life.
let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, who when Christ had been baptized in the river Jordan, and as the Holy Spirit descended upon him, solemnly declared him your beloved son, grant that your children by adoption, reborn of water and the Holy Spirit, may always be well pleasing to you through our Lord Jesus Christ, your son, who lives and reigns within the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord, Here is my servant whom I uphold, my chosen one with whom I am pleased, upon whom I have put my spirit. He bring forth justice to the nations, not crying out, not shouting, not making his voice heard in the street. A bruised reed he shall not break, and a smoldering wick he shall not quince, until he establish justice on the earth. The coastland will wait for his teaching. I, the Lord, have called you for the victory of justice. I have grasped your hand. I form you and set you as a covenant of the people, a light for the nations to open the eyes of the blind, to bring out prisoners from confinement and from the dungeon, those who live in darkness. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. 
Peter proceeded to speak to the crowd in the house of Cornelius, saying, In truth, I see that God shows no partiality. Rather, in every nation, whoever fears him and acts uprightly is acceptable to him. You know the word that he sent to the Israelites as he proclaimed peace through Jesus Christ, who is our Lord of all. What has happened all over Judea, beginning in Galilee, after the baptism that John preached. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and power. He went about doing good and healing all those oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. The word, word of, of the, the Lord. Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. This is what John the Baptist proclaimed. One mightier than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to stoop and loosen the tongues of his sandals. I have baptized you with water. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. It happened in those days that Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized in the Jordan by John. On coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens being torn open and the spirit like a dove descending upon him. And a voice came from the heavens, you are my beloved son with whom I am well pleased. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. With the celebration of the baptism of Jesus today, the Christmas season comes to an end. And tomorrow, we begin the celebration of the ordinary time of the year. The psalmist says today, the Lord will bless his people with peace. It is my prayer as we begin, as we enter more and more into this new year, 2021, may God Bless you and your family with peace. Let the church say amen. amen. And so when we look at the baptism of Jesus, one thing that really strikes me 
is the revelation of the three persons in the Blessed Trinity. You know, the word Trinity is not found in the Bible. But there is a revelation of it in the Bible. And so we are told today that Jesus was baptized by John the Baptist. And of course, there was a dialogue before the baptism actually happened because John the Baptist felt unworthy. You know, John the Baptist was a very humble person. He, he, he saw Jesus as mightier than he, he was. And he said that Jesus would baptize with the Holy Spirit. You remember in Matthew chapter 3, verse 11, you know, he had, John the Baptist had taught his disciples that Jesus would baptize with the Holy Spirit and fire. He says, I baptize you with water, but he who is coming after me will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. And today, he repeats it again in this gospel. He says, Jesus will baptize with the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is the third person of the Blessed Trinity. So it's being revealed. So what is happening in this gospel at the baptism of Jesus, God is revealing himself. He is revealing Jesus to the world as his divine son. He is revealing the Holy Spirit to the world. He is revealing himself. And that is how we hear the voice of the father. This is my beloved son with whom I am well pleased. God is revealing to us also the importance of baptism. Even though we know the baptism of John the Baptist was different from the baptism of Jesus, the Christian baptism. You know, the Christian baptism and the baptism of John the Baptist are totally different. So you want to really understand the difference, you read Acts of the Apostles chapter 19. You remember when St. Paul went to Ephesus. There, he met 12 disciples of John the Baptist. And he asked them a question. Did you receive the Holy Spirit when you came to believe? And they answered, we have never even heard of the Holy Spirit. We've never heard of the Holy Spirit. What is the Holy Spirit all about? So in that particular John chapter 19, you realize that for St. Paul, there was a clear difference between Christian baptism and the baptism of John, given by John the Baptist. Yes, the baptism of John the Baptist was a baptism for the forgiveness of sins, but he did not, he did not impart the Holy Spirit into us, into people who were baptized. The baptism of John the Baptist did not wash away original sin. But the Christian baptism does that. And that is why the church says baptism is necessary for salvation. Jesus, from the words of Jesus, unless you are baptized with water and the Holy Spirit, you cannot enter into heaven. But the church also teaches that God is not bound by the sacraments. Amen? God is bigger than the sacrament. God can decide to save people. He can decide to infuse his grace into people who are not even Christians. As long as they love, the, they, 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 they do the will of God and they love God, they love people. Amen? So this is why it is very important in, 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 in our time. Right now, there's a lot of division uprising here and there, including the pandemic. People are, people are terrified. People are afraid of the future. But I always believe that the future is bright. Amen? Amen? And I believe that God is calling every one of us to reflect on love. We should love one another. Husband and wives, love one another. Love your children. Children, love and obey your parents. You know, somebody said, um, a wise person said, life without love is like 
a tree without fruit. So what, 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 a tree without fruit is useless. And that is why when Jesus approached a tree without fruit, the fig tree that Jesus approached, he cursed it and he, and he, and he, and he lives with that. And it's also very important that we are rooted in the love of Jesus. We are rooted in God. Because a tree without, fruit, without roots cannot have fruits. In other words, without the tap roots and the roots of a tree, you can never find a fruit or flower on the tree. We have to be rooted in the love of God. This is very important. And I believe that as children of God baptized, we are actually one. We are all adopted children of God. Amen? So baptism has an effect. If you read the Catholic Catechism, there is an effect when we are baptized. We are given new life. And that is why Jesus came. The heavens were torn open. The way to heaven is open. We have been given new life. We, we have received the Holy Spirit at our baptism. But then, God is calling us to profess our baptismal um, um, calling. God is calling us to live out our baptismal uh, promises. So we've got to figure out how to do that. And for me, the way to do that is to love one another. Amen? You know, someone said that, um, it's kind of funny to me. You know, he was teaching some children about baptism. And it appears the children were distracted. So he realized that the children... In the, uh, the priest was a missionary priest, or is a missionary priest. So he realized that the children love to eat rice. So he gathered them together. So when he was teaching baptism, he used rice as an acronym. Amen? So he said, arrow means rebirth. So he was teaching the children. He said, when you are baptized, there is a rebirth. You are born again. You, have, you, have, you, you enter into a new life. And it says, I means initiation. You are initiated into the church. You become a member of the church. And C means consecration. You are consecrated. You know, the consecration means you are made sacred. You become holy. You become holy. And E means empowerment. So when, when, when the Holy Spirit came upon you on the day of your baptism, you were empowered to live out the gospel values. So something actually happened when you were baptized. And so the baptism of Jesus also reminds us of our own baptism. And to thank God for it, to thank God for it, it means that the way to heaven is open to us. Amen? And so dear friends, you see the first reading is taken from Isaiah, prophet Isaiah, deutero Isaiah, second Isaiah. And it, it talks about the suffering servant. Jesus is the fulfillment of that prophecy of Isaiah. He is the suffering servant. His baptism is connected to suffering. He came to suffer, to die for us, to redeem the world. Jesus, he came to open for us, give, give us access to heaven. Amen? Amen. So you, 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 you see Jesus at the, as he began his public ministry. The first thing that happened was temptation. After the Holy Spirit came upon him, the devil came to tempt him. You know, I was, I was looking at the life of St. Ignatius of Loyola. St. Ignatius of Loyola. You know, when he talks about the discernment of spirits. And then he talks about 
you know, people who are making progress towards God. There are people who are, who are growing in their faith. They are making progress towards God. There are other people who are regressing. They are regressing in their faith. You know, God wants us to make progress, to grow. But here is what St. Ignatius of Loyola said. You know, he said, when a person is making progress in his spiritual life, there is the activity, or there are the activities of two kinds of spirits. There is a good spirit that encourages the person. Amen? When you are making progress in your spiritual life, the, the Holy Spirit encourages you. But there is an enemy spirit that tries to cause turmoil, chaos. So the moment you begin to grow in your spiritual life, the enemy spirit begins to oppose you. So it's very important to discern it. You know, Jesus was able to discern all these things. That is why he was fruitful. That is why he bore fruit. So the moment the Holy Spirit came, the next thing, the enemy came to oppose Jesus. And there was, Jesus was in the wilderness for how many days? 40 days. He was opposed. I want to let you know, open your eyes to it. Sometimes you make up your mind, oh, my New Year's resolution, I'm going to quit smoking. Get ready. The enemy may want to oppose you. And the enemy may want to tell you, why do you want to quit, quit, quit smoking? That's the only way you need to relax. And then you start noticing confusion. You start noticing confusion. And then you want to go back because the enemy wants you to fall back to your bad habits. And so the New Year's resolution that you made becomes a failure. So it's important for the children of God to be able to discern. When you make a New Year's resolution, don't change it in times of desolation. That's what St. Ignatius said. Don't change it in times of, in hard times. Keep doing the good thing that you are doing. That is the good spirit encouraging you. Amen? And so Jesus, finally Jesus went into a synagogue. He went into a synagogue. And there was a man with an unclean spirit. And then the unclean spirit when he noticed the presence of Jesus, he said, what do you have to do with us? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the only son of God. Where did the unclean spirit hear it? At the baptism of Jesus. I know who you are, the only son of God. And Jesus said to, to, the, to, the, to the unclean spirit, be quiet, come out of him. And immediately the spirit convulsed the man and came out of the man. And the man was totally free. Fulfilling the promise and the prophecy of Isaiah that he will free those in the dungeon of darkness. He will, Jesus will pull them out of darkness. He will break the chains of Satan and set captives free. This is what we celebrate. And so today we continue to ask God, may he give us the grace to love him more intensely, to know him more intimately, and to follow him more closely in this new year, 2021, through Christ our Lord. Amen. May we stand to profess our faith. I believe in one God, Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God. Begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit, 
and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Trusting in God who sent his own son for our salvation, let us offer our prayers this day. Please respond, Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. For the church, may Christ continue to bless her with all she needs to bring love to the world. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord for the salvation of the world and for men and women of faith willing to proclaim the gospel to the ends of the earth, let us pray to the Lord. Lord for women facing challenging pregnancies, may God look graciously upon them and grant them strength and hope and a community of support. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those among us preparing for baptism, may the Lord continue to deepen their faith as they grow in their knowledge and love of him. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our beloved dead, as they died with Christ in baptism, may they now rejoice and live with him forever. Let us pray to the Lord. Loving God, please hear and answer our prayers this day according to your holy will, since we have made them through Christ our Lord. Amen.
pray, dear friends, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all this holy church. Accept, O Lord, the offerings we have brought to honor the revealing of your beloved Son, so that the oblation of your faithful may be transformed into the sacrifice of him who willed in his compassion to wash away the sins of the world, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Amen. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Amen. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For in the waters of the Jordan, you revealed with signs and wonders a new baptism, so that through the voice that came down from heaven, we might come to believe in your word dwelling among us, and by the Spirit descending in the likeness of a dove, we might know that Christ your servant has been anointed with the oil of gladness and sent to bring the good news to the poor. And so with the powers of heaven, we worship you constantly on earth, and before your majesty, without end, we acclaim. indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gates, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dew form, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more, giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith.
Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Blaise, our Bishop, Paris Auxiliary, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, with Saint Margaret, Saint Cailin, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our, Our Father, Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace.
Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Of Christ, the body of Christ, the body of Christ. Christ. The body of 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 Christ.
prayer of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most blessed sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you have already come and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Amen. Behold the one of whom John said, I have seen and testified that this is the Son of God. Let us pray. Nourished with these sacred gifts, we humbly entreat your mercy, O Lord, that faithfully listening to your only begotten Son, we may be your children in name and in truth, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. I just, I don't want to forget, I just want to thank you for all your prayers um, during this Christmas season and um, for all your gifts. Thank you very much. I've not been able to reach individuals, but I ask the good Lord to bless you. And um, all our volunteers who are helping, thank you for helping um, um, organize the church. Please be seated. As you know, our pastor, Father Donald, and associate pastor, Father John, are members of the Missionary Society of St. Paul. And this society has missions all throughout the world, and they do fantastic work. And we're blessed to have Father Donald and Father John with us here at St. Margaret of Scotland. This letter is from their mission development office. Dear parishioners, may the blessings and the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, whose coming into the world we celebrate in this holy season, be with you all. As the year 2020 ended with its unique challenges, I sincerely want to thank you for your continued support to the mission office of the Missionary Society of St. Paul, especially by the activities of those in your parish. Please know that these efforts continue to yield great results. We thank you for telling our mission story and for encouraging your parishioners to pick up the monthly contribution calendars. Those calendars are found in the uh, middle pew on the east side of the church. There is an envelope for monthly contributions in them. Please pick those up as you leave the church today. There's another announcement. Please pray for the repose of the soul of Jacques Sampson. He is the son of Carolyn Sampson, a very active member of our parish for years. The funeral arrangements because of COVID-19 are pending. The Lord be with you. May God, the source and origin of all blessing, grant you grace, pour out his blessing in abundance, and keep you safe from harm throughout the year. Amen? Amen. May he give you integrity in the faith, endurance in hope, and perseverance in charity with holy patience to the end. Amen? Amen. May he order your days and your deeds in his peace. Grant your prayers in this and in every place and lead you happily to eternal life. Amen. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit come down upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God. Have a blessed day.